Good everyone, welcome to this video on the i15 M22 sub request by It's Phillips, and this is the final sub request I have in the um, in my sticky notes on my computer because I have to note them down, otherwise I will forget. The i15 M22 is obviously one of the first reserve biplanes that you get with the Russians, and well, I played Russia third, then I played Britain, then Japan, etc., etc. And well, I didn't really see how OP the I-15 M22, well, just in general, the I-15s were until I got the Chaika, and that thing was fun as hell in arcade. Because back in the day, obviously, we're going back some years now, I think the Yak used to be 2.0, and this thing was absolutely beastly. Combine that with the Chaika, two of the I-16s, because obviously the Type 24 and the Type 18, two lags, an SU-2, an SB-2M, you can imagine the choices of lineup you had. But obviously at the beginning, you have your three reserve biplanes. The I-15WR, the I-15M22, and the I-15R. They're all pretty much the same, as far as I can tell. Now, fun fact about the M22, I never actually spaded it. Until around about a year ago, when I realised I hadn't actually done the new 7.62 MGs on it. Obviously, that's done and dusted now, but I just thought I'd make that point known, just so you can know how much of an idiot I am at times, but hey-ho. So the A-15 was obviously a 1930s biplane designed to be the, shall I say, the mainstay of the Russian Air Force for a bit until, obviously, new and more modern aircraft came online. And, well, these things weren't bad for their time, but in War Thunder, they are absolutely insane. They can turn on dime with no problem at all, and, oh, I mean, I was test flying it yesterday just to see how it flied. And it was able to take off at 67% throttle at 60 miles an hour, just because it has so much lift. Even with the bombs on board, which we are going to be taking today. Now, the one thing to note about the I-15 series, these early ones, you do not get the Shukas machine guns, you get the PV-1 machine guns. Which, if I remember rightly, seeing on a page of some sort, they are similar to the Maxim machine guns. I may be wrong, but just with the way they're designed and all that, they're very similar to the Maxim guns. That's what I've seen anyway, I may be wrong. But um, obviously, you know the drill with the golden rule. If you're in a reserve plane, you can carry bombs, carry the buggers, because... You're going to need them, most likely. Our bomb load today, obviously, is the only bomb load you can unlock. And that is two 50kg bombs underneath the wings. Obviously, other nations tend not to have bombs on their reserve planes, such as um, France doesn't, Italy does with a BA-65, Japan doesn't, Britain doesn't, but these three, USA, Germany, and the USSR, do have bombs on a reserve. Obviously, Germany is just 10 kilogram mean bombs, but it's still bombs. So let's go briefly over the plane's x-ray, because why not? I mean, I haven't done it in quite some time. So you're powered by a known Rhone M22 engine, and to be honest, I swear that is a French engine, or it's an Italian engine, one or two. But produces about 570 horsepower, it's pretty good for the time. Its speed isn't the highest, but it will get you there eventually. Its dive speed is actually pretty good. All your fuel is located here, so if you take a fuel tank hit, you're dead. And your PV-1 machine guns have 750 rounds apiece, so you've got a lot of ammo to spare. And that's why I like these Russian Reserve, because they're very new player friendly. Even if you're going around spraying your ammo everywhere, you'll still have at least 1,500 rounds. And you can derp up some ground targets, so... That's how I see it. And obviously you've got bombs, so that's even better. Okay, let's jump into the battle waiting. But um, in terms of my Russian Air Force, I'm actually researching MiG-17. I've spaded pretty much everything up to the Yak-9P. I've spaded the B-20, I've spaded the IL-10s and the SU-6s. Spaded the TU-2S, had a couple of flights in the S-44, which... It's not a good plane at 6.0, or 6.3. The I-225 is unflown, um, the Yak-9UT is unflown, the TU-4 and the LA-9 is unflown. 
personally, looking at that repair cost of the T4, I don't think I'll be flying it for quite some time. Just happen to look up at the right moment. Okay, so... 20 minutes of fuel, universal, guns, guns are nose mounted, we've got the bombs. I'll just sat there on my phone, to be honest. Because why not? I mean, it alleviates the boredom. Let's roll, we're in a VR2 match, I can tell straight away, because it's Koski's Chaker. Oh great, what's some retard? Really? Really? Right, that's it, you're going out the fucking sky. Give you fair warning there, pal. If he starts, I'm gonna team kill him, I don't care. Oh, really? Right, that's it, mate. You're dead. You are dead. You are dead. What's my one rule about team killers, people? If they do anything, they are dead. Luckily, his shooting's terrible, so we're not taking any damage, really. Yep, he wants to fight. Okay, bombs off. That's it, you're going out the sky. Obviously, you know my new rule about this shithead. Oh dear, we had to ditch the bombs, but that's fine. Well, you know, join me in the second flight. Obviously, I left the first part in with that team killer attempt. I don't get what the fuck his problem was, but... hey oh, we've got to teach retards, haven't we? Got to teach him a lesson. I'm I'm leaving it in because, well, I can. I mean, I nearly team killed a fucking Sunderland on my team because he was trying to... Well, he was shooting at me. And, well, I didn't want to get kicked from the game. I got 15 ground targets, something like that, so... The thing is, right, people, is that you've got to teach these retards a lesson. They're not going to learn their lesson if you just let them get away with team killing you. They're just going to think it's fun and they're going to keep doing it. So, I've left that part in. You'll obviously see that. I was just with Jane Braun about it and he just laughed. To be true, if not, he just laughed. And there's Fate of 59, the guy in the Sunderland who was shooting at me. Fucking Wangstein. He's lucky I didn't shoot him, Dan. And to be honest, I probably will this game. If he does it again. But yeah, I had to ditch the bombs last game, prepared the plane, and then obviously you'll now see this battle. Oh my god, lower tier teams are cancerous. What climb angle are we at? Yeah, 20 degrees will do it. But yeah, I thought, well, I'll leave it then. Shit stay needed to be taught a lesson. Because, well, you shot at me on the runway, I fired water shots at you. I said, don't do it again. And if you carry on, I'm gonna fucking team kill you, I don't care. I only lost 1200 lines for that battle, but it was well worth it. I really don't get what his problem was, though. Okay, you've had a pretty good fun so far. Oh my god, your stat pad had a freaking spammy arrow, bloody hell. Oh my god. Yeah, I've got a couple of bombers over there it seems. We could intercept them, but I'd rather deal with fighters personally. But like I say people, you've got to teach those retards a lesson. You, they're not going to learn anything. If someone shoots at you, fucking team kill them. Because they're never going to learn the lesson. They're going to think it's fine to just go around attacking players. And again, another fucking team kill. Are you they're in a fail squad? Yeah, they are. That's fine then. That's fine then. If you want to team kill your mate, go ahead. You're just being a dick. But 
Okay. We could basically outturn everything on the enemy team. I'm just going to monitor my Discord, and that Nuiga 5 guy, or however you say that, he was in the previous game as well. Where I shot down that retard. The problem is, people, is that guys are not going to do anything about them. If anything, I'll probably get the punishment, but I really couldn't give a shit. Because, well, I'm just going to claim self-defense in that case. Because that's what it is. It's self-defense. But, whatever. Guys are going to give a shit anyway. We've got MiG-3 coming in to help, okay. I'll break off for the... I don't know why my plane decided to do that, but whatever. Okay, we've got three... What? There's a Stuka joining the party? Even better. I'll let him know I'm on the way. Obviously, he's got two Kai I-43 higher boosters on him. What he should have done here is he should have jumped on his tail gunner. Oh! All the Kaya 43 just rammed him. Okay, that's no problem. Obviously, Kaya 43 is a bigger threat. Because, well, it's a Kaya 43 higher booster. They're pretty damn dangerous if the pilot knows what he's doing. But clearly, looking at this pilot, he doesn't have a bloody clue. Was that another fire? It bloody was! Oh, but just... What the fuck was that? Um... For some reason, part of our wingtip came off. I have no idea why. Um... Problems! Problems! Um... Right, he's broken off. Let's turn it around. Because we're winning a head-on against that thing. I have no idea how my wingtip just broke off. It's probably the AAA fire, because AAA. And the Stuka just suicided. Okay, I mean. Well, I can keep the plane flying. I've still got an Aider on, so that's all that matters. Just don't shoot my other wingtip. Well, in fact, do shoot my other wingtip off, actually, mate. He's coming for a head on. I'm better at head-ons. Good night. Second kill. I think I probably over G'd the airframe for too long, so that's probably why. I mean, I can keep it flying, so that's all that matters to me. And for the plane scaling speed, like it, it just really doesn't care, to be honest. But yeah, the I-15 normally has never been this vulnerable to G maneuvers. Either that or a friendly AAA gun here. So I reckon it was over Ging though. But if it was over G it'd snap the whole wing off, so Okay, well I haven't well I used the bombs in the last game, but obviously I cut that bit out. So we might be able to use the bombs this time. Big three doesn't kill all the ground targets first. Fate of 59, by the way, people, is that sad in life? He has a stat pad and a sun of it. Even then, he can't even break a 2 to 1 KD. I find it hilarious. Alright, out of the way, retard. I'm coming in. Yes, I know I'm missing part of my wing, but a story for another day. Like I said, this thing flies just fine with a wingtip gun. As long as you keep the wings level and all that, it's fine. It really doesn't care, it's just it's slowly leading to one side, but that's perfectly fine. Okay, bombs time. Let's hope this doesn't cause us our eventual death. Or if that Sunderland tries it again, because I will just fucking kill him. I don't care. Lucky I didn't last game. I 
And we've still got the bomb drop, even with the freaking... That's the triple eight. I'm surprised it hasn't killed us yet, but clearly, because we're in a reserve, we have protection of the retards, which doesn't make any sense. Just level 100, but yeah, whatever. I'll take it. It's not that difficult to fly this thing, like I say, with most of the wing gone. I mean, well, a part of it. It's fine. It's, it's no big deal. But yeah, G-forces seem to be a real problem for this aircraft, I understand it, but whatever. Okay, that's that. We could have had three kills, but obviously that um, B-156 got rammed. About a kill out of 43, but hey-ho, shit happens. Alright, let's go back to the airfield, shall we? And I'm not even, can I just point out, I'm not even touching the mouse control or anything. No keyboard binds, no nothing, and it is flying like this. See, it's safe to say this thing's pretty stable. Alright, well, let's get back to the airfield and we can go over the plane, obviously. And well, give you the warnings about it clearly. Cause I did not expect this to happen, that's for certain, but it clearly doesn't care. Yeah, we've got two kills, a couple of grand targets, so I'm happy with this result. It's no big deal, I mean, as long as we get some kills to a degree. And obviously, you guys got some bonus footage by seeing that team killer attempt by that guy. This guy's camping the airfield, yep. That's nothing new. Let's get the wing fixed and then... Well, the wings, because the lower right-hand wing is also damaged. Let's get the lower wing fixed, upper wing fixed. Get the guns reloaded, get the bombs back on board, and let's go and see what we can do about that B5N. Also, this is my second match of the day, and... I've had, well, two team kill attempts. One by that Sunderland, which is behind us, so as you can tell, I'm a bit anxious about him. He's lucky I didn't go for it because I was tempted to, but I gave him a warning. But let's just say I'm glad I don't have any more sub requests for reserve biplanes for now. Okay, well, landing with, well, I mean, flying with part of a wingtip gone has been totally fine. What's that guy doing right there? Oh, he's, he's probably crash landed. Alright, throw it back to zero. Obviously, the extra drag by the left hand wing will help us in a way of braking. Of course, Gaijin logic is your wings apparently cause you to flip over when you land. But I've kept right ailer on all the way down, so we're all good. And job done. We're nice and safe landed. Engine off. <sighs> yeah, this will be the end for the sub request for the um, lower tier aircraft. Well, for now, obviously, I haven't been given any more sub requests. But in the meantime, I'm watching you, Wazowski. Always watching. And we'll get some reference put in the comments. <laughs> Look, here you can see 100% throttle, and it takes off at 60 miles an hour. I'm so tempted to bottom that fucking sun, I really am. Yeah, you will despawn in. I'm watching them because I know what this play is like. Just crank it back a bit just to make sure he ever shoots. It's 
gunners are watching us at least, so... I'm watching his gunners, so we're just keeping an eye on him, really. BB1's having a crack at B5N. And we did get to pull the trigger, but... Yeah, whatever. No big deal. So, two air kills, six ground targets. Pretty good match overall, and we got the money back from the previous battle. Good, good. I'll quickly just show you the um, the results for that battle right here. So the A15M22, nice to fly, but like I say, the G warnings clearly mean it because that wing just came off so quickly. But it's no big deal. The plane was perfectly stable regardless. Obviously, you guys did get a bit of bonus footage from the team killer attempt. Hope you enjoyed that. Hope you enjoyed the flight we had. It wasn't much, but we got something done, and obviously we took the plane out. Because normally with people, when they do sub requests, they tend to just get aces 24-7. I will show it if it's a good battle. And, well, the first battle wasn't particularly good. This one was, so I hope you enjoyed it. And if you've got any sub requests, as usual, leave them in the comments below. And, well, I'll catch you all on the next one, and I hope you enjoyed